Uh, Chris, you you saw all the stuff that has gone on regarding Kirk Herbstreet and Desmond Howard's, uh, I guess you could call it hot take, but it was more so old men uh, yelling, get off my lawn to today's players for the most part. So all of this went down right before the Rose Bowl. And, you know, I I think uh, Pat Forty said it best on the Yahoo Sports podcast. He said something along the lines of, if you you put a microphone in front of somebody long enough, they're going to say something dumb. And especially if they haven't gotten a lot of sleep, et cetera, right? ESPN, for whatever reason, publicly promotes exactly how much Kirk Herbstreet is working, right? He called three bowl games in four days. He, (laughs) which is just absurd. On top of that, he flew from Miami for a playoff game on Friday night, overnight, through the new year, all the way over to be on the morning game day at the Rose Bowl, and then called the Rose Bowl. But he's still on talking and giving opinions on things on, what do you think he got for sleep? What, maybe three hours? At best, he probably slept no, on the plane. Listen, this man, this man is not flying southwest, okay? All right? <laughs> no, I guarantee he's a private you the plane. entire time of that plane ride, he slept, okay? <laughs> Regardless, it was not a ton of sleep, I, I don't believe. Over, over that uh, few days there, I don't think that he was getting a ton of sleep. Uh, I'm not going to bash Kirk Herbstreet for having the opinion that players should play in bowl games. Uh, but I think you have to look at this a little differently in that when Kirk Herbstreet played, there were only a handful of bowl games. And when these guys are playing, there's a ton of bowl games, and there's more light at the end of the tunnel. I, more of this has to do, I think, with players wising up to the business as opposed to anything else. Uh, give me your thoughts on, on what's going on, and then I want to talk about uh, that former Ohio State player Marcus Williamson's response to it. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah, I mean, I like Kirk, and, 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 you know, I don't agree with everything he says all the time. This is one of those places where I just disagree. And here's the thing. It's not a lack of sleep that, that gave him this opinion, because he has right. this opinion. This is something he's strong about and he believes, and I just think he's wrong, okay? And that's okay. All right, does it does it make him good and me bad, or me bad and him good? It just makes our opinion on this different, and, and I believe that he's wrong. Um, the the biggest instance of why why he's wrong is yes, when he played and Desmond played, we also used to do drills like the Oklahoma drill, and how many unsafe practice things did we used to do? Literally every practice was a padded practice, and guys were slamming their heads together over and over and over again. And you know what? Through the evolution of time and science and resource, we understand that those things were wrong and we don't do them anymore. They're not safe anymore, okay? We also understand through all of that science that football is, it's it's like a car in the sense of your body can only take so many miles. There's only so many yards you can run. There's only so many snaps you can play before your body begins to break down. These are, at the end of the day, meaningless exhibition games. They are no. Di- if they were before the season instead of after the season, they would be nothing but preseason football. If you look at the NFL, they play meaningless exhibition games, and nobody plays in them. Nobody. Like, what? What is the purpose of those games? It is to narrow down your roster. It is to work out practice squad guys and see who you want to build around maybe in the future, who has a chance to make the team and who doesn't, okay? That's what the bowl games have become. Let me get an opportunity to showcase my talents because I wasn't good enough to start when the game matters. But I want to show you what I've accomplished, what I've worked on all year. And now i got a chance to go against live bullets instead of practice. All right? So that's what these games are. They're exhibition games. And for you to say that these stars have to play in them, yeah, and by the way, all that work that, that Kurt did, that, that ESPN advertises so likely, yeah, they, they forget to inform you the fact that he's highly compensated for that work <laughs> by ESPN, who profits off of these games. So, yes, yes, he and ESPN want all the stars to play. He also has to call these games. And it's really hard to call the game when you need a damn roster in your hands for teams that you've called three or four times this year. 
Okay. Yeah. Especially when he's so, doing three so, and four nights. Yeah, you should, for the most part, be able to call those games without a roster sheet. But now that you yeah, get into bowl he, season, you got to figure it out. He wants, yeah. He, he needs to know who these players are because half of them he's never heard of before. Okay. And that's, that made more work for him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to the safety and welfare of these kids. And here's the thing. If they want, it's all, we live in a world today where it's all about personal choice. Everything in life is about personal choice. Okay. And when you get into the article that you shared out, the little Twitter, uh, I don't, I, it's not an article. It, it, it's just the like a thread. Twitter thread. Yeah. I guess that's what it is. It, you shared it out, tagged me in it. I read through it. And, and you see what these guys go through day in and day out as college athletes. And then you're going to tell me that at the end of the day, they put all this work in. And the reward is this cupcake. The reward is this big dessert that you got, right? And you're telling me if you don't eat that dessert, you're a piece of crap, that you don't love the game, that you're a part of the problem? No. No, I can't get a, I can't abide by that. I can't get down with that. Okay? And, and then you want to caveat it later. Well, well, all of them don't love the game. So you mean, listen, Micah Parsons and, 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 and Jamar uh, Chase, Last year, set out the entire season, not just not just the playoffs, not just the bowl game. They set out entire junior year. All right, and and you're gonna tell me they don't love football? Go watch them on Sundays and show me how much Jamar Chase loves football. Micah Parson loves football. Yeah. All right? No, they didn't want to play in your little bowl game. They didn't want to play in your little exhibition game. That doesn't matter to them because well, that no, stuff it, matters. It other... matters to some kids, but yeah. they should have the right to choose that. It's all about personal choice, guys. Exactly. The guys that they were talking about, there was a little more allegiance to schools back then, right? It was, at, look at David Pollock, well, who was on the was set. Everything was allegiance to school back then. We just lived right. in a different world back then, Gary. Exactly. It's all globalized now, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. You live in a social media age. This is how the game has changed. And there's nothing wrong with the way that the game has changed. I, I don't... I don't agree with Herb Street, but that's because he comes from a completely different era. Like I, no, do he I, does, no, he doesn't, Gary. He's like five minutes older than you and I. <laughs> but I think that I'm almost some 40. Have He's the, like forty-seven, right? But some okay? people have that's the capability. A era. I, agreed. You and I did not play college football, so we don't have that same mindset of you bled for this school. Uh, this school provided you an opportunity. You owe it to them, right? I don't believe that, and you don't believe that, because we were yeah, able Bill to Bartels adapt. and Bill Belichick never played a down of football in their lives, okay? I think they still have their right to be an authority on the sport. No, no, no. I'm not saying that you okay? and I don't have a right to be an authority on this sport. What I'm saying is you and I have the capability of adapting. I, I don't necessarily know that some – everybody has different opinions, right? I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not gonna give him an excuse for not wanting to bend on his opinion. All right. No, no, uh, agreed. Like, just because he agreed. played, like, like you're, 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 you're making excuses for why he thinks the way he thinks. We don't know why he thinks the way he thinks, but he thinks the way he thinks, and that's fine. I disagree with him. I think he's wrong, and I like his opinion because I think he's got the most powerful voice in the sport. Yes, yes, he does. He's he's the guy. He's the he's on all of the different ads. He is. And there's a reason why ESPN wants to put him on the playoff game and the Rose Bowl the next when day and game day, etc. Everybody listens. All right. Yes. He, when if he says a team is good, listen, Nebraska all last season was like so far, wait a minute, not last season, a couple of years ago. He picked Nebraska to be a dark horse to be a playoff team, and <laughs> and and it moved Vegas's line on what they should be from a win loss perspective, like. Four games. We're not talking about a little bit. We're talking about a lot, Gary. A oh, I lot. remember. I and remember. It, <laughs> it didn't come close. You and me made a fortune that year. Yes, we thanks did. Thanks to Herbie <laughs> giving an opinion. And it, it, it's just his opinion. That's fine. He had an opinion about a team. I have an opinion about teams all the time. I'm wrong about them. That, that happens. It's a preseason fault before the season plays out. Okay? But at the end of the day, like, his voice is that powerful. People in Vegas who know what they know moved team total games. Four or five games, man. Yes. Four or five wins. It was a huge number. It's it, And it will continue to do so because, it, again, I don't think he's going anywhere. But let, no, let me go either. 
Uh, let me go on and start with uh, with this Marcus Williamson thread, the Twitter thread, which I, I tweeted it out. You can go find it on my Twitter page. But he said, I want to wrap about my career as a young black college athlete at the highest level. As guidance for you go-getters coming up, shout out Westerville and those city kids chasing. Uh, he said, as a 17-year-old early enrollee, Urban Meyer told me he would ruin my effing life if he ever caught me smoking. He said, it makes you wonder how much control do these institutions have over our young black boys. He said, my first team meeting, true story, 2017, uh, this photo was presented to us via PowerPoint to institute our building-wide rule of no hoods in the building. And it was uh, one of the kids that was shot when he had his, uh, his hood up. It was Trayvon over. Martin picture. Yeah. So he said, after, uh, after said meeting, the freshman and myself go sign hours of paperwork, essentially signing our rights as Americans over to Ohio State and the governing bodies. He said, shout out NIL. At least these boys can get their name. Uh, they own their name now. Like he said, it's sarcasm, but uh, he, he hey, ain't wrong. I'm, I'm going to tell you that part about signing away government stuff. I would love to get my hands on all that paperwork, and I'd love to get it in front of one of my libertarian uh, party friends and, 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 and some attorneys that believe in freedom and rights and, and the rights that we have in our country. And I would love for them to just absolutely abuse these schools in court with them. I would oh, yeah. love to. Right now, none of these kids want to buck the system, so they don't ever turn any of that stuff over. Well, and but, that's that's but, partly but what just, he talks just, about. Just leak it, leak it out one day to somebody who matters, and <laughs> let it get in the hands of of a, of a of a of a constitutional attorney that fights for your rights yes. in this world. ACLU. He said, but uh, but Marcus, they educate you. He said, ask any college athlete if they can take their studies as serious as they need to with our athletic schedules. He said, most people won't understand. Participate in your lecture or discussion in your 8 a.m. class after a mat drill at 6 a.m., and you got to arrive at 5 if you're a freshman. Professor, my hands are bleeding from the rope pull, but you want me to grab my pencil. He said, come in with the plan. Find your value as an athlete and leader, but never let these people play you. Your gut will be checked as a man every day you step in the building, nut up early. He said, I was repeatedly pushed past my injuries as if I was completely expendable. And he said, you are. Like, you are expendable. 2018, I used to wake up, put my shoulder in place, and go to practice. They banded you up like shit sweet. The industry is often silent because everyone is obviously chasing the big payday, but the injustices these players face just isn't right. We literally put our bodies and lives at risk with zero guarantee. He said, pay college football players like the minor league players that they already are, Pop quiz, what American industries rely on free black labor for the lucrative benefit of white men? So then he said, people ask, why don't you leave or quit? Most of us have only been athletes our entire lives. This is how we try to feed our families and children. It's either play their game or have zero chance at the lottery. He said, some of the best human beings I know played on some of my teams, but we bond through the traumas we endure and the hardships we face to keep it 100. He said, we play a violent sport for free, yet narratives like these, what Herb Street said, want you to believe that we're somehow soft or we don't love the game if we use our leverage as athletes to make money. This is America. You work hard. You should be paid. He said college football players keep putting pressure on these institutions to make meaningful change in athletics and our communities. I thought it was insanely well put. I thought it was well put together. He thought this thing through awesome. It was it was perfect. It's exactly what people yeah. need to hear. Follow down on that th- uh, Twitter thread. He would not he did not say this. He didn't put any of his accolades or acumens on here. But this is this is an academic all star. This is not some dumb dumb jock that 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 had a really good thought wanted to come out. This is a guy with with his head on his shoulders, crazy smart, crazy uh, uh, ability to um, articulate his thoughts and 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 basically what happened to him. And and, and you can't you can't say well that's just your perspective. No, this is what he lived. This is what he saw. This is what he went through. And he saw other people go through it, too. And if, and if you think any of these other schools are any different, you're wrong. If you think LSU just think any different, or Alabama, or Oklahoma, or Clemson, or anywhere else in the world, they all do it the exact same. It is absolutely a complete and utter mill. You just grind people through it. Yes. Yes, 100%. I mean, he played this season as a, as a graduate student. Like he's he graduated early. He went to IMG. He started taking college courses when he was in high school. I mean, he was awesome. So, you know, very very awesome. I thought it was really well put, and I definitely wanted to hit it. 